What is up everybody? Good morning, it's Chris from Team Aquascape. Today, I'm gonna take you guys through the process of resealing a biofalls. This is a project that we did not build, but this is a indicative of a very typical backyard water feature that we kind of inherit just through our maintenance services. So we've been cleaning this pond for a couple years now, and last fall, the customer developed a leak. One of our service techs, Jack Pazinski, who you've seen on a couple of our videos before, came out last fall to troubleshoot and determined that there was a leak at the biofalls. At that time, Time, the customer said why don't we just wait until the spring we'll fix it then so I'm out here today I'm actually a couple days ahead of the cleanout crew that's gonna be here next week but I'm gonna go ahead and take care of that fix it and I'm gonna walk you through the step-by-step -step process on how that works and also fill you in on what tools and materials are necessary to pull this off All right guys, I am out here on the job. First, I wanna walk you through the tools that I bring with my tool kit out here to the different fix-its, but more importantly for the biofalls and skimmer reseals, the tools are essentially the same. So let me turn the camera around and kind of show you what I bring with me. What I have here is first, I'm going to bring a couple cans of foam with me. That's gonna help me reseal the void space behind the rock work when I get done rebuilding the waterfalls. And that will help me fill up those void space to get that water to flow over the rock the way it's intended to. I also bring out some silicone so you can either get the tubes, I think they're about 10 ounce tubes, or we also sell them in a smaller size that come with our install kits, that kind of stuff. So you're definitely gonna need silicone for this. For hand tools, I will bring a pair of scissors or a razor knife. Today I've got a pair of scissors. I also have a multi-tool screwdriver, so this will have your Phillips head, your flat head, that kind of stuff in there. And then a 3 8 nut driver, which really helps for screwing the hardware into the grommets on the biofalls. I also have a heat gun in case I need to dry the face of the bio falls off or the back side of the liner after I'm done cleaning it and getting a nice clean surface so that I can get it ready to reattach. I also have a couple different kinds of hardware. Now on the Aquascape bio falls, we have brass grommets that are actually machined into the bio falls itself. Occasionally those will corrode and rot away depending on water hardness. So occasionally you'll see that these grommets have to be replaced. So I always have a few dozen of these on hand and I won't know until we get into it if we're gonna have to use those or not. And and I also, of course, have my replacement hardware. These are the screws that we're gonna use to reattach the faceplate to the biofalls and or the skimmer. We also, occasionally, it's easier for us to use just stainless steel hardware. And basically what this is, is this is a stainless steel screw. There is a lock nut on the other side along with two washers accompanied by it. Not quite sure what I'm gonna need, but on these reseals, you never quite know what you're gonna get into in the condition of the biofalls or the hardware that will attach everything together. Sometimes you can reuse it, sometimes you can't. I just want to make sure that I am fully prepared for anything that I'm going to be walking into so that I don't have to make multiple trips to the hardware store and I can get this job done as efficiently as possible. The last thing and very important is always keep some scrap liner on the truck. This is like a seven by something piece and what the extra liner is for is in case you ever have to do an overlap. If you can't reattach the existing liner to the faceplate of the skimmer or the biofalls appropriately, sometimes with the waterfalls I found that it's much easier to just install a bib liner. So not quite sure what we're gonna get into today, but it's always good to have an extra chunk of liner in order to pull that off. So let's walk over here. This is the scene of the crime. Looks like it's a homeowner built waterfall. Jack, like I said earlier in the video, was out here last fall and determined that the seal back behind here attaching the liner to the biofalls was leaking. So the first step for me is going to be get this thing demoed and then kind of assess what we need to do. So I'm gonna put the camera down and get everything torn apart and then I will pick the camera back up and kind of show you what I'm looking at once I get everything kind of torn apart in here. I've got a majority of the rocks all moved out apart. You can see that the liner, which is right here, is kind of coming back this way around the rock and likewise over on the left side. You can see that the customer or a different contractor that they brought out has tried a variety of times to kind of seal everything up to no avail. You can see we've got clear silicone, we've got white great stuff foam, we've got yellow foam, we've got all kinds of stuff. We've got the original gray foam that we use, um, but you can see right here that the liner has separated from faceplate of the biofalls and 
there's there's literally nothing holding this into the biofalls. You can see the corrosion that's happened on all of the grommets. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and pull this rock out of here, kind of clean things up, pull the gravel away. I don't think that I'm gonna have enough liner to kind of pull it up and reseal it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do an overlap, which is why I brought that extra chunk of liner sitting over there. And it'll just be basically a two and a half by 12 inch piece of liner that I'm gonna drape in on top of the existing liner and then just reattach everything and then build my waterfalls out from there. So I'll show you that. But first I gotta get this rock out of here, which is kind of the big aqua blue right in the middle in order to make it easy for me to work. I'll kind of clean this up, get some of the old silicone you know, that just kind of pulls away all the foam off and get everything kind of cleaned up and then get this biofall slip off, pull out all the gravel and then get it to a nice clean slate so that I can make that reattachment. Okay, so one thing that I really wanted to show you guys and girls out there is I'm gonna go ahead and start to unscrew, see if I can do this with one hand. I'm gonna start to unscrew this screw and I wanted to show you what happens when I pull the head of the screw out. Now it is loose in there. I'm gonna go ahead and just try and get the rest of it by hand. Sorry guys, out there. But that's what it looks like. Only about half the screw is left, which tells me a couple things. One is, I neglected to mention this earlier, but a cordless drill also with a drill bit um, is going to be probably needed with this. And what I mean by that is once I detach this faceplate and kind of peel everything back, we may have to kind of drill out just to clean up the holes because there's obviously stuff being left in there if these screw heads, or if these screws are breaking as they're coming out or just they're basically falling apart as I'm pulling them out. Just wanted to show you that real quick you can see I didn't even get any part of the shank it's just the head that popped off of that one so you can see pretty easy in through here looks like I got one more down at the bottom that I need to get out of there and then yeah see that thing's just I mean it's just toast it just totally strips it so I'm gonna go ahead and pull this off with some force with very little force and get this thing off so let me put the camera down real quick and take care of that and then I'll pop right back Here's the biofalls lift that just came off very, very effortlessly. It just kind of pulled away. You can kind of see some of the different areas where the screws were. You see some of the corrosion. So we'll just have to kind of clean this thing up, scrape off all the old foam, any old silicone, that kind of stuff. Get that clean, but I also wanted to show you what the attachment looked like at the faceplate of the liner. So you can see how the grommets and everything are really, really, really corroded in here and nothing would stick if we tried to screw it all in there. So I have to go through, clean up all of these holes and you can see they've tried to band-aid this thing multiple, multiple times. So definitely time for a solid fix. So I'm gonna clean all this stuff up, get it ready to roll, and then once I get those grommets back in, I will show you what that looks like. Okay, so <clears throat> went through, kinda got things cleaned up in here. You can see we've got pieces of screws that are still left. I'll have to get that out. Occasionally what you can do is just kinda take your screwdriver, take your screwdriver in here, and just kinda clean things up. You just see, like it just completely falls apart in through there, and just make sure that you get Get all that junk out of there get it nice and clean or like in a situation like this or even this one where there's still actually a grommet left sometimes what you can do is you can get in here and kind of unscrew this but unfortunately it's so stripped and i just can't get a good bite on it so i'm gonna end up bringing the cordless drill in and actually drilling this thing out and then pulling it out that way so i'll show you that in a second okay so clearly i thought i was fully prepared at the beginning of this video when i was talking about two that i neglected to mention is one is i have a cordless drill here and then i also have a pair of pliers here i've got a lot of these things nice and cleaned up in through here but I still have to go through and get that one clean get that last old grommet out and you can see that I still have a handful more to go but just wanted to bring that up that you do in fact need uh, in certain occasions a cordless drill and a pair of pliers So we got all of our grommets out. You can see it look a little in there, but we're gonna go ahead and clean that up. First things first though, is you'll notice, maybe kind of hard to tell, but there's a little plastic that's kind of protruding or sticking out from the faceplate. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take, a tool that I found is very nice is just an old fashioned pipe cutter. And what you do is you just kind of go over hold it up tight against the faceplate and just kind of shave off that excess plastic. Now before we do the final cleanup over here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna be installing the uh, grommets into the face of the biofalls. To do that, I'm gonna take my flathead screwdriver to where it sits something like that. You can kind of see how it fits in there nicely. Then I'm gonna take my screwdriver with the grommet attached into my top hole here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm simply going to turn, I'm gonna go ahead and turn this grommet in so it gets nice and 
flush with the face of the biofalls. Repeat that process for all of the holes on the biofalls all the way around. Now you can see we've got all of the grommets installed all along here. Just gonna go through and kind of make sure we clean up all those little plastic burrs. Anything that's not gonna allow that liner to seal as firmly and evenly against the face of the biofalls as possible. We'll also go ahead and clean all this up in through here, get it nice and clean. Now the next step is I'm going to cut my bib liner that's going to drape over the top of the existing waterfall liner. Get that thing attached using the faceplate and the new hardware, the new brass screws, which you can see one of them I'm sitting right there and then we'll start piecing that waterfall back together. So I've got the faceplate cleaned up. I went ahead and trimmed off some of the old liner. It was definitely too taut to try and reattach using the pre-existing holes. So what I did is I trimmed it down. You can see about two inches below all of the grommets. And the reason I did that is I don't want to have a variable in thickness when I'm attaching the faceplate back to, to the biofall. So I just want to make sure that, that liner stays down below so that I don't get it pinched between my overlap liner, which is sitting right here, and the faceplate of the biofalls so that I make sure that I get a nice even seal with the new liner. And this new liner is going to drape over the top of this. So I'm just creating an overlap. So let me show you what I mean by that. So we're gonna take a liner and like I said, I cut it about, eh, this one I cut a little bit or long, but then I drape it over like so. So I make sure that I go well past the outside or the exterior of the frame rocks based on the waterfall the way it built. Then I'm gonna come back over here and kind of line my face plate up with those top two holes on the corners of the skimmer. having a sod staple or something to poke a preliminary hole into the liner is it's really challenging to start that screw through the liner because of how dull it is on the front through that EPDM liner. What'll happen is you can chew that liner up, it'll start to twist it, that kind of stuff. Now that I have the faceplate temporarily installed, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up and cut my opening for the biofall. So I'm gonna cut all this excess liner off and then what I'll do is I'm gonna pull the liner, the faceplate and the two screws off, keeping everything together as one unit. So let me do that real quick and then I'll walk you through the next. All right, so normally I would have a razor knife. Unfortunately, I don't have one, but I do have a blade. So it's important to have a nice sharp blade at this point. I think Brian probably walked off with mine and ended up in his pocket. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and start trimming this liner. I never wanna start down at the corner. I like to start up above everything and then kind of work my way around. Those of you that have been through Academy on how to attach either the skimmer or the bio falls. When I'm teaching the class, I always want to round my corners. I never want to hack in 90 degree angles where two cuts actually meet. So you'll see as I go through this. Go ahead. And, so you see I've got the opening for my biofalls cut. Now what I'm going to do is I am going to take the top two screws out. At the same time, I'm going to go ahead and I'm unscrewing these top two screws. But what I'm doing is I'm actually holding the liner in place so that it comes out with those biofall screws as well. So I've got that one disconnected. I'm going to do the same thing over here and I'll show you the importance of that. When I go to put everything back together, I can put it all together in one piece. So now I've got the faceplate of the biofalls nice and clean. Now I'm gonna take my silicone and I'm gonna go ahead and start up at the top and start working my way down. It's okay to be liberal with this silicone, guys and girls. So you can see I've used almost that the whole tube. It was open, but I used the majority of it on this one. Here's where I wanna show you the importance of having these top two screws in. So now when I pull this liner up, go ahead and pull out the slack. Make sure it sits nice and flush with everything. It's up so I don't have any weird folds. It just gives me a really, really good sense of where that liner is, needs to be. The challenge um, on some of these bib liners is making sure that you don't get any folds or wrinkles 
holes in the liner when you're attaching. So what I did is I went ahead and started my top screw here in the corner. I have it started. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get that other corner started in the other side. I don't want to go all the way in yet. If you feel like I'm yelling at you, it's because I am. There's an airplane overhead. I want to make sure you guys can all hear me. Okay, so I've got my top two screws started in the grommets. Now I'm going to come through and just make sure that I don't have any wrinkles in that liner between the face plate and the face of the skimmer. So now that I've made sure that my liner is nice and taut without being over tight, I'm gonna go ahead and just screw in my top two screws. I want to kind of just take a quick second to show you. So you can see I've got my face of the skimmer, my bead of silicone, my liner, and then the face plate of the skimmer. I've got the top two corners tightened up in there. Now I'm going to go through and what I'm going to do is I'm going to start the bottom and get the bottom corners done just to hold that thing nice and flush, get it up tight up against there. And then I'm going to go through and put all the rest of the screws. Quick little pro tip that I just thought about. Sometimes what'll happen is it'll be really difficult to get that screw started after you go ahead and puncture that kind of pilot hole in the liner. So when you're getting that screw in, occasionally what you'll have to do is you'll have to hold these two together to get that screw to bite into that grommet on the inside or on the face of the biofalls or skimmer itself. So just a little pro tip in case if you're struggling, make sure you're holding these two pieces kind of together. You can see that that silicone is already starting to bead up and buckle up because of the compression that I'm creating by making that seal using the screws. So I've got all of the screws installed, as you can see, and through there, all the way around, even on this side. Last part of what I'm gonna do to kind of finish up is just I'm gonna go through and kind of give everything one last tighten just to make sure we're all good. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna trim off some of this excess liner just along the inside right here. But I wanted to show you, see that camfered edge? I don't wanna have 90 degree angles on that. Do the same thing over here, but just keep that in mind when you guys are doing this, okay? All right, so at this point, we have the biofalls all completely resealed. The next step is going to be tighten up this overlap and go ahead and rebuild this waterfall. So the trick to this is, when doing an overlap, is making sure that you have enough elevation change, which is four inches or greater. Typically, six inches is my, kind of the least amount of grade change that I go for, but you can pull this thing off with four, four inches. So you can see, stand back a little bit and kind of give you a view over here of the elevation from the biofalls, the lip coming out of the biofalls to the gravel, that's about 10 inches right there. And the top of that gravel is the elevation of the pooling area to where I'm sitting, which is the waterfall going into the pond. So my next step is going to be to get my frame rocks on both sides, go ahead and put that piece of slate that was existing on the lip of the biofalls and kind of just kind of piece this back together. Ideally, I'd like to tear all this out and rebuild the waterfalls completely. But at this point in time, the cost of that was not within the budget of the customer. They just simply wanted to get it fixed, have it leak free, and just put back together as is. So that's what we're gonna do today. So we're gonna go ahead and get back into that. So we've got everything kind of put back together. We've got the waterfall all foamed up. I'm just simply waiting for that silicone to dry and the foam to dry. It's super important that you don't fire this thing back up too quickly. You don't want to disrupt the curing process of that silicone or the foam, creating either a leak or a separation of the liner to the biofalls or also with the foam to kind of open that foam up where you foamed and then allowing water to get back underneath or behind the rocks so your waterfall can't function properly. So I'm just simply waiting, 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 waiting for this stuff to dry. And then we're going to turn this baby on and we're going to get out of here once we find out if all of our edges are good and that everything's good to go. All right. All right. So we've waited long enough. We're going to plug in this Aqua Surge 4 to 8,000 pump and we're going to go ahead and get this thing up and running. Double check our edges, which is always super important when rebuilding a waterfall. No matter how long you've been doing this, you always want to make sure that it's leak proof before you walk out of the customer's property. Oh, we can see the draw. Perfect. Lovely. Hear it filling up the biofalls now. Oh yeah, there it is. All right, so we've got water. It's gonna be a little dirty coming out because the pond has not yet been cleaned. But this is the moment of truth. Nice. 
They were looking for a, just a veil of water, nice and even coming out through there, which is exactly what we gave them. Looks like I can block up that left side just a little bit, just to get a little bit more water coming through. But when I come in through here, got my waterfall foaming through here. This is all foamed up on the sides, but I did leave weep areas in through here, just with that bib liner coming down in. Double check this one, just to make sure. Looks like we are all good. Again, another weep hole back in through here, just in case. Looks like everything's staying inside the liner. We are good to go. That is a wrap. I know it was kind of a lengthy video, but it's very important that you want to make sure that you take your time with this, go through all the proper steps, make sure that when you're doing this, you're not going to have to come back due to your own negligence or just not simply taking your time. So make sure you have all the tools you need, you understand the process, understand what needs to happen, get it done right, do it right the first time, and then you have made the customer's day and kept their pond running for years to come. If you guys like what you saw, go ahead and hit the thumbs up button. Let us know you enjoyed the content today. If you have any questions regarding this video, please feel free to give us a shout. We'll be sure to get back to you. And if you haven't already, as always, click the subscribe button. Stay up to date on all of the Team Aquascape content that comes out every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday. Till next time, we'll see you later.